Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Shock. I'm Corey and this is the 2022 Toyota Sienna. This platinum all-wheel drive version has Lexus-like interior appointments and luxury features that I truly did not expect uh, when I picked up this Toyota Sienna for the week. Completely redesigned for the 2021 model year, all Siennas are now hybrid vehicles and this one in all-wheel drive trim gets 35 mpg across the board making this perhaps one of the best long haul road trip vehicles on the market. In this video, I will give you my impressions from living with this for a week, driving from East Texas to Houston and back, and giving you my thoughts on how this fits my family. Stay tuned. Starting under the hood of the 2022 Toyota Sienna, you do get their 2.5 liter four cylinder engine mated to, in this all wheel drive application, two electric motors for a combined system output of 245 horsepower. It is a stout little engine and electric motor combination. It is by no means the sportiest minivan on the market, but that's not really why you would buy a minivan. You buy these to cruise up and down uh, on long road trips, and that's what we have been doing in this one. As I mentioned earlier, this is a top trim platinum model with this gorgeous pearl white paint that helps show off all of the unique design body body lines on this vehicle does have a very short hood but we'll talk more about the, those proportions as we move around the side it is a hybrid powertrain so all this is blacked out and solid plastic no need uh, to really cool that small 2.5 liter four but you've got this massive grill down here below that uh is mostly functional this is all closed off this is all closed off here but still getting plenty of air into uh, that 2.5 liter four cylinder but a very front very aggressive front end for sure you get uh, by led headlights up front that do a great job and led turn signals very cleaned up very modern front end on this toyota sienna but let's move around to the side and see what makes this minivan a minivan i would say this is probably the most aggressively styled minivan on the market of which there aren't really many you have the chrysler pacifica Honda Odyssey, this, and uh, despite what Kia tries to claim, the Kia Carnival MPV, though they want to shy away from that uh, minivan moniker. But as with the Toyota Highlander that we had a few weeks ago here on the channel, I feel very targeted with the lines on this vehicle from the this line right here that very much mimics the side line on both that Highlander and their Toyota Supra uh, high performance coupe. Uh, this is again a very aggressively styled vehicle. Very nice body lines here. You get a really big dip here on the side that even goes into the taillights. You get kind of a, a shrinking greenhouse that we'll talk about when we get in here to this rear window back here, but a very nice uh, design here on the side. There's only so much you can do with the minivan shape and that low floor. This being a platinum does get the kick to open side doors on both sides, which I love a lot. And so does Tucker because uh, he is able to get in and out of the vehicle all by himself. He's a little short, so pulling on the door handles does not always work, but makes for a very premium experience uh, getting into uh, this vehicle from any of the four doors let's move on to the back and i will show you some more super design cues and what makes this van so functional so if you thought i was kidding about this having many design cues from the super sports car I, i'm not 
Uh, this right here, this lip back here is lifted straight off the tail end of the Supra. Couple that with those body lines on the side we talked about earlier. Uh, this dipping line here, that really is just plastic and part of the taillights. No functional vents there. This is as Supra minivan as you can get. Because this is a hybrid, much like up front, you get the blue outlined Toyota logo. That is a telltale sign to see uh, what powertrain a Toyota vehicle has. But let's pop open the hatch and see what exactly is back here in the back. Now we are on the road. We are currently in the oldest town in Texas. Kudos to you if you can figure out exactly where I am from that clue. But because of that, we've got a little bit different configuration in here. You can see Tucker's car seat is all the way back in the back. The rear seat is 60-40 split bench and folds into the floor very nicely, as you can see under all of our camping chairs there. And there is a nice deep well here that when the uh, rear seats are not stored, you can put plenty of luggage. It is really hard to beat the cargo carrying capacity of a minivan no matter how you slice it. Now I'm going to actually back up here to fully show you my perhaps one major nitpick with the rear of this vehicle. I am 5'10 and this hatch is fully opened. Uh, it does not go up any higher than this. So taller people, six foot, you are going to be hunching down underneath this hatch. They do have an off-road trim of the Sienna that does get about half an inch more ground clearance. So uh, something to consider back here uh, when talking about uh, the clearance under the hatch. I'm actually going to pull these seats out here and I haven't even talked about the second row seat, but I'm actually going to need to move it up and out of the way for purposes of demonstrating just how easy it is to get this rear seat up and usable for people. Handle right here to lift up and pull, and then another handle right here uh, that pulls up the seat back. The headrests do fall into place, but it is a very comfortable back seat that reclines all the way to the back of the hatch. So there is not really a bad seat in this entire vehicle. And then no matter what recline position you have it in, very easily folds back into the floor. There is a little bit of a carpeted trim piece that hides the gap and you can load your stuff back in there button located there on the hatch door and it closes up very nicely. Now I did mention the off-road trim earlier that gets a little bit more ground clearance. I was surprised with just how low this particular vehicle is to the ground. If you followed our channel or podcast for any length of time, you'll know that I've got a 15 degree incline driveway that does not so much like this uh, factory optioned uh, rear trailer hitch. So between overall low ride height and then adding even more lowness down back behind that rear axle, this is a very low configuration. I have no doubt in my mind that without this trailer hitch, I wouldn't have even noticed the ground clearance, but just something to be considerate of uh, as you shop for your next minivan. But let's hop inside because that's where you're gonna be spending most of your time in this vehicle. Sitting in the driver's seat of the Toyota Sienna, I am very comfortable. This has been a very good road trip vehicle. From the two-person memory seats, the very comfortable leather-wrapped seats that are heated and ventilated, and both of those settings are remembered every time you turn the vehicle off. So whether you had the seat heat on or the ventilation on, if you turn the vehicle off and back on, those same settings will be in place, which is a huge kudos here in East Texas because it gets warm and stays warm for a big portion of the year. And having that ventilated seat, remember that you had it on each and every time you use it is an excellent thing. 
The seating position here, you feel like you're in the front of a Starship. In fact, Tucker has been playing Starship uh, since we have gotten this vehicle. You get this floating bridge center console that does not have anything underneath it. So there is a large area down here for storage space for bags or whatever. You get one, two, three, four cup holders up front in the center console alone. You get two more in each of the front doors and even more back in the back. You get a mechanically actuated gear selector, which I actually really like. Drive mode switch, EV mode button, which will allow you to putter around in full electric mode at low speeds. Electronic parking brake and an engine hold feature. The climate control buttons and system up here is very easy to use. Has a four zone climate, so each front passenger, each middle row passenger gets their own climate controls. And then you get this large tray up here that works great on long road trips because you could just pile anything you want up here, including a Qi wireless charger. All told, I really like the front seat impression. I'll talk more about what it's like when we get this one out on the road. Sitting in the back seat of the Toyota Sienna, you can see there is plenty of comfort with these super slide captain's chairs that scoot all the way to the back row and a full fold out ottoman. There is no reason to be uncomfortable back here in the second row of seats. I did mention up front, this is a quad zone climate control system. So I do get controls up here for that as well as heated seats here in the captain's chairs right in front of the rear media entertainment system. These are super slide seats. So they do scoot all the way up to the back of the front seats and the front of the back seats plenty of range of motion on this and they do tilt forward and recline you get armrests on both sides it's very comfortable and with the power slide doors you get these very large windows with peasant blocker sunshades uh, to help keep your kids or rear passengers comfortable but i'm actually going to bring you in here and show you some features that you can't see from out there Moving inside the Sienna, I wanted to show you the actual controls for those rear seat climate. So you can see I do have heated captain's chairs back here. I can turn the fan speed to auto, turn off the rear climate, and I can adjust uh, my temperature back here. Right now it's synced, but if I adjust the passenger side, you can see two different controls back here uh, for ultimate comfort. And that sits right in front of this 1080p HD rear screen that drops down from the ceiling. Very nice and comes in handy. Uh, up front, you have a rear view camera mirror because with this screen down, yeah, you really can't see out the back. You can see from the screen right now that we have our Apple TV plugged in via the HDMI port and the household style plug right here for a little convenience of home when we're out on the road. In addition to that household style plug, you get a USB-A and USB-C charging port back here. And then in the center console for the front is where we found the four wireless headphone units uh, for the rear seat entertainment system stored right below a, another USB-A and USB-C plug back here. And then you can see following that white cord, that is the USB-A used for accessing uh, CarPlay on the nine inch color screen up front. You do get map pockets on the backs of both of the front seats. You do get speakers in the door. You get those sunshades I mentioned with very good uh, large windows, great for viewing out. Cup holder in the door. You get an electronic switch <laughs> lever here for opening the door, but you also get a button here on the side that'll allow you to close the door from there as well. Toyota definitely gives you options. And then I mentioned just how much space there was with these super slide seats, but I'm actually gonna put you back on the tripod to show you what it's like crawling back into that third row. 
So these middle row seats are really best suited for adults because if you put a car seat in them uh, to access the rear seat, you're not gonna be able to do so with a car seat in place. The seat bottom folds up and the seat back folds forward. And then you can very easily climb into the third row. It is actually a very cushy seat here and does recline, as I mentioned earlier, rather far so you can get a great seating position of that 1080p screen up front and still be very comfortable back here. There are two wired headphone jacks back here with independent volume controls, some sunshades on the mirror or on the small windows back here, and one, two, three, four cup holders as well. There's also a USB-A and USB-C there on the passenger side. There are full car seat hookups back here in the third row as well, but I'm gonna tell you more about putting this car seat in in my family review with my wife and kid. Stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, I would say even here in the third row, I could travel all the way across the country in this, no problem. All right, gearheads, I am driving around the campus of my wife's alma mater. And if, again, you can figure out exactly where I am filming this review, kudos to you. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. But uh, being that I am on a college campus and in a parking garage, I thought I would give you a rare look for this channel of what exactly it looks like inside the vehicle. Uh, when it's dark out. So here you can see a very nice layout of everything and a nice blue glow to everything that aren't the white lit gauges. The brightness on this rear view camera screen is also adjustable, but uh, you can flip this lever right here and get a traditional rear view mirror, which uh, I actually, surprisingly, for those of you know, who know how much tech I really like in my life, uh, I, I like switching back and forth between the two options. Um, it's a very close angle, but it is mounted back in the back under the word Sienna on the tailgate. Nine inch color touchscreen here with wired Apple CarPlay. It's very quick and responsive. It is not Toyota's new system that they have been putting in the Tundra and some other vehicles here lately. Um, but if you are familiar with any Toyota product of the last uh, three or four years, you'll be very used to this infotainment system, as well as uh, the steering wheel controls and the auxiliary screen here between the speedometer and not the tack because this is a hybrid version, you get a power meter that lets you know whether you are driving in a full uh, electric mode, whether you're charging the batteries, whether you're using the batteries, or whether or not you're using that engine, which I have discovered that I have needed to actually uh, go in here to the information screen and hit eco to be able to tell sometimes when that engine does come on. Under hard acceleration, you can hear it. That two, two and a half liter four cylinder engine uh, with the combined system output of 245 horsepower sometimes does struggle a little under the heft of this vehicle, especially if you have it loaded down with people and stuff. But for general cruising, uh, this has been a very pleasant vehicle to drive. I will get out and do a little bit more high speed stuff here in a little bit. Uh, so I won't get too much into the drive modes of which there are three, normal, sport, and uh, eco mode. And there is a nice little readout on the digital helper screen up front that lets me know when I am driving around as a pure EV, which before I set off right there, I was, but I can tell that the engine is on. You can see from here, it is actually powering the front wheels. So doing a little bit of work here uh, as we climb some of these hills uh, in the piney woods of East Texas. I mentioned when I was talking about the seating position up front here, 
this has been a very, very comfortable vehicle for the long haul. Uh, I actually picked this up from to Toyota in the DFW Metroplex. And since picking it up, I have put um, over 600 miles on this vehicle. And it has been comfortable for every single one of them. The ride in this vehicle is very plush, very soft, not jarring whatsoever. Given that you are essentially in a big hollow tube or cave, uh, you would imagine sound to resonate in here a little bit more than it does, but it is a pleasantly quiet cabin and really plays up uh, that Lexus quality I mentioned earlier in the intro, including something that really goes overlooked, and that is how quietly the windows operate up and down. Uh, all four windows in this model are express up and express down, uh, which works very nicely. You know I'm a fan of that. Driving around town in this, I had mentioned the powertrain needing this screen to help me figure out when I'm in EV mode versus when I am in gas mode. And that's actually a really good thing. You will know from uh, my wife's reviews, she's become a little critical and she should be of uh, how abruptly engine start stop features have been working in some of the vehicles we've tested lately. In this, it is a very smooth transition that if you are not paying attention, I don't think you will know, hence me having this screen pulled up in front of me. You can even put the same readout here uh, in front of you as the driver. Uh, that gives you just a little more insight into what's going on without having to use the CarPlay infotainment screen. I've got it right now on your Eco Score that grades your starting, stopping, cruising, and general driving behavior and how economically you are doing all of those things. I currently have a passing score of 84, but I guess I could be doing better. As you do step on the brake, it does use both of those electric motors, of which, yes, there are two. One for the front wheels and one for the rear wheels uh, to regen the battery power in this hybrid vehicle. This is an electronic all-wheel drive system in that there is no drivetrain actually going back to those back wheels. It is powered exclusively by that secondary electric motor a railroad crossing and it does a really good job it kicks in when it is needed it does uh, the work of regenerating power for that battery pack and is an unobtr unobtrusive system all the way through very comfortable very easy to get around in and between the hybrid powertrain and the fact that this is all-wheel drive, there really aren't any compromises with this vehicle. You've got cargo capacity for days. You've got room for any size passenger and enough comfort to make anyone pleasant for a long haul. And with the electronic or with the hybrid powertrain, uh, I. I have seen 450 miles of range on the uh, computer readout myself, but know for a fact that this can flirt with maybe even exceed 600 miles on a single tank of gas, which is saying quite a bit because I think you're going to be needing to pee ever before you're going to be needing to stop up and fill this vehicle up with gasoline. That's <laughs> quite high praise uh, for what is one of, if not the best road trip vehicles on the planet. We're on some older roads now, a little rougher pavement. Most of the noise that you're probably hearing right now is from Tucker's car seat way back there in the third row. This really is a quiet and comfortable vehicle. This does ride on 18 inch wheels with plenty of sidewalls, so just the wheels and tires alone are giving you uh, plenty of uh, comfortable suspension and then you move to su the suspension components and this top tram top grade platinum 
really does a good job of soaking up the bumps and making for a comfortable ride. They do offer an off-road version as well as a sport trim in the XSE, but this really is the best long-haul cruiser of the bunch uh, for any age group because of those super slide rear seats. I didn't even mention earlier, this does have a 10 inch color heads up display that allows me to see the status of my adaptive cruise control, my lane keep system, the posted speed limit that is triggered by the, um, the, the speed limit sign recognition in the cameras up above here and my current posted speed as well as a little bit more of that power information that lets me know if I'm charging the batteries or not. There's almost an overload of information here between this screen, this screen, this screen here, the, the power readout and the rear seat inf infotainment system. Once you get everything dialed in on this vehicle to the way that you like it, I would imagine you're probably going to leave it that way uh, just because there is so much to be seen. I will note though that uh, the one letdown of this vehicle for me is the backup camera system. Hold on, let's drop this into uh, sport mode and see as we merge. So I mentioned 245 system horsepower. It'll get up and going. It, it makes a little bit of noise along the way, but it, it'll get you moving just fine. I really haven't noticed much difference between the three drive modes, but I'm sure sport mode gives you just a little quicker throttle response. Going back to my one major letdown of this vehicle, and that is the rear view camera system in this vehicle. Uh, it is extremely, extremely grainy and uh, quite a bit of a letdown, especially considering uh, the camera used for this rear view camera mirror is such an excellent camera and display here that the graininess of the rear view system just makes you wonder where the focus was for the bin counters at Toyota as they were finalizing details on this vehicle. In fact, instead of just talking about it and allowing you to hear what I think, I'm gonna pull off the road here and uh, flip this into reverse just so you can see for yourself uh, what I am talking about. So, as you put it in reverse, you get your three, uh, or your bird's eye camera system. You do get trajectory lines both here on the rear view camera as well as the bird's eye camera, but that is just a very grainy screen that I was not expecting in a $55,000 Toyota product. If you put it in drive, there is even a camera button down here that allows you to see up front, gives you a little heads up of where your corners are and where they relate here on this bird's eye system. So after doing a quick U-turn from giving you that look at the camera system, I'm gonna pop this back into sport mode and uh, we will get back up to speed and see just one more time what this does under quick acceleration. All right, here we go. It pulls, uh, it, it does a fair job of getting you up to speed. It has plenty of power for passing, which is really how you are gonna be using this vehicle. I would say nine, 90% of the time, if not more. Now, you will note that uh, I typically do a real world U-turn test and I'm outside of my normal testing area in this. So I am on a divided highway, which doesn't give the best example of how well this does, but uh, we will still give it a good run here. And oh my goodness, yeah, the turning radius on this uh, does very good. The turning uh, feel is very light. It's easy to point in the right direction. Very confident to drive uh, on the road and in parking lots. 
I, I've got no complaints whatsoever after 600 miles of driving this around of how it drives. Completely comfortable. Didn't mention I've got over 600 miles on the odometer since picking this up in the DFW Metroplex. I've done a lot of highway miles in this and where this really excels as a hybrid is actually in city driving, of which I have not done a whole lot, but we did get stopped in Houston traffic. Mentioned the EPA rates this at 35 MPG across the board. Here in Texas, we have a little bit higher speed limits. That plays into my 33 and a half uh, MPG since picking this up. I believe if you truly drove this as a Sunday driver or a commuter vehicle that you would get that 35 mbg no problem as far as who this minivan is for I would say my family would benefit from it quite well although Tucker at four years old and 40 inches tall may be just a little short to take in all of the advantages of those super slide rear seats but I would say um, families with teenagers would absolutely love this between the screen those very comfortable seats or families with adults uber drivers um, and we'll say the more mature of our um, population would absolutely love this vehicle because it is so comfortable on the road in our trip to Houston, we did have two adults ride in the back and they were just hampered in comfort and luxury back there. Absolutely no complaints. I will give you my thoughts and impressions as I ride back there with Tucker in our family review as Holly takes this around uh, and back to Tyler, Texas uh, so that she can give you her thoughts and opinions but uh, let's head back to Holly's alma mater and give you our final, or my final thoughts on this 22 Toyota Sienna Platinum all-wheel drive. And yes, it is a hybrid. Yes, I would say at 55,000, this minivan is a very, very comfortable place to spend time and a little bit of a bargain you get a Lexus level of luxury and quality here in the Toyota Sienna. It is supremely comfort, no, comfortable no matter which seat you are in. And yeah, the vehicle's actually on right now, but because it is a hybrid, uh, when the gas motor is not needed, you're not using it. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with this minivan. It, it has been a superb road trip vehicle for me and my family. Speaking of my family, if you want to see their impressions of this vehicle and uh, how it fits all of us together, uh, be sure and subscribe so you'll see that review when it drops. But until next time, gearheads, bye. I can actually tell you, I am saying a lot of words. Please do not use any of this. Blah, 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 blah. Let me get my stuff together. <laughs> this hybrid only model for, crap. This 2022 only comes as an, mm, that was the one, that was the one. I can actually, Pull this, uh, frick, frick.